Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Six Figure Certified, the podcast, obviously. And our producer said to me the other day, Olivia, you never tell people to subscribe in your episodes ever, like in years. So please subscribe to these episodes. Mm. <laughs> uh, we have a good one today. So hopefully it makes you want to subscribe. But I am joined with a guest and I feel like we're finally bringing more guest interviews back and who better to kick it off with than someone I have known in the coaching industry, like longer than basically anyone. And it's my girl, Laura Weldy. I'm so excited to be here. You are my bestie in the coaching space and also just a bestie IRL. So, so excited (laughs) to be here. Laura, as I was saying your name, I like remembered, not remembered because I was at your wedding, but- Mm -hmm. Did you take Bert's last name too or no? No. Oh, okay. Okay. So I didn't mess that up. So we are no, off to you're a good right. start. A mildly good start. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, okay. So let me give you this like quick little history of Laura and I's relationship because, okay, first of all, she has an episode on season one because she's like a six figure coach. She went through IGC, but like run it back even further. So many of you probably don't know this, but there was a time in my life where I lived in Nashville. My first son was born in Nashville. It's when I was at the lowest in my business. So the story Mm -hmm. I tell about doing like 10 sales calls and having zero clients happened in Nashville. My first six figures happened in Nashville. And then also I hired Laura as my first assistant in Nashville. Nashville was good to you. Definitely challenging. It was some good things. Yeah, I know. And I stole Laura from a job. Well, she was like doing nonprofit and then she was working at an eyeglass store. And then I don't know, we she like replied to a job ad that I did. I can't believe some of the stuff I used to do. Like now I'm like, how do I write a job ad? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know you were on, I think I found an ad on monster.com, which is so funny because I've heard that that doesn't even, I don't think that even exists anymore. Why would a job company name themselves monster.com? I have always wondered that. Weird. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, I was working three part-time jobs and answered this ad to be an assistant to you. And we met and we had coffee. And then we were like, oh, we love each other. We're going to just do this together. And here we are 10 years later. I can't believe it's been 10 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. You're like one of my longest relationships. Very (laughs) proud. That's a proud thing for me. <laughs> oh, God. So all of that to say is like Laura went through all of the levels of coach training. I actually feel like Laura cared more about the credential and all of that than me or like a lot of people, which <laughs> I love her for. But she had a very good reason because Laura is one of our like star coaches when it comes to like corporate coaching big company contracts, organizational coaching. And I have to say, I don't know if it's like the trends or just like the spaces that I'm hanging out with, but we are getting so many people who are interested in doing that. Like, I feel like years ago, it was just like, how do I get one-on-one clients? And now it's Mm -hmm. like, how do I get, you know, one of our students got a huge contract with Spotify. And I'm like, so people are Mm -hmm. asking for more stuff like that. Like, how do you get these how do you get your foot in the door with corporate or leadership or, you know, mm-hmm. organizational type coaching? And I know you're the perfect person for that because you've been doing this for years and you work mm-hmm. with so many C-suite women mm-hmm. and I'm just going to stop blabbing and like, tell us how to do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, we need the insider I mean, secrets. It makes me happy that this is a trend. I agree. I think it's really become more popular in the last like year and a half. Um, Before that, when I would tell people I was pitching companies or pitching corporate, people would look at me like I was crazy uh, because they were like, who wants to hire a life coach for their company? But of course, I was pitching through the angle of leadership. And for anybody here who's kind of new to the just starting to dip your toe into the coaching world, coaching really first became popular, I feel like in the US through executive coaching. Right. So like that was like the the first boom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was really focused on like productivity, um, performance, and this idea of like coming in and like either optimizing high performers or coming in and like redirecting low performers. Right. (laughs) And 
<laughs> I knew I know why that makes me laugh. Okay. Well, I knew from the beginning, I was like, I don't want to be that person. Like I, I don't want to work with executives, but what I wanted to work with was the women like I had been who were in what I call like the messy middle of their careers, the pre-suite, if you will, before mm-hmm. the C-suite, who knew they had so much potential, but weren't being developed. So Are I was like- Are you a middle child, Laura? Yeah. Hmm. This just How did you know like that? Child, because it just feels like the middle child. It's like, you're not the oldest. You're not the youngest. You're kind of overlooked. Like, I feel like that's kind of what you're saying. It's like people who are doing their job, so they're not getting in trouble, but they're also mm-hmm. not standing out and excelling or, you know, living and working to their potential because no one's really putting anything into them. They're yeah, like they're, little, they're not being invested. Under the rate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I knew that I was like, okay, this isn't going to be executive coaching. I'm going to go with this leadership coaching because I want to develop women leaders in the middle of their career so that eventually, you know, we have more women in the C-suite. I have been like a gender um, equity activist my whole life, right? Like I've always been big about this. So I was like, this is how I'm going to do it. And gosh, how do you do it? Um, I feel like I've tried everything. I feel like I started with more one-to-one. I spent a lot of years kind of marketing my business toward those women and eventually realized that I wanted to do this in two ways. I wanted to market to the company and I also wanted to market to the individual. So the, the, the B2B is what is trending now, right? Business to business. So this idea of us as external businesses pitching other businesses to provide our services for their employees. And I do it a couple of different ways. I book speaking gigs. So I've been doing public speaking for like 13 years. Um, A lot of these companies have employee resource groups. So I love to schedule events with them where I come in and I connect with the women-focused employee resource group to offer them just a ton of free value as a way to get in front of the right people. Um, But also as a way for the company to like demonstrate their willingness to invest in their women talent. Right. Because, you know, especially millennials, all of the research says that we really value working for a company whose ethical and moral values align with our own. And so seeing demonstrations of investment in like what they care about, is just important to people. So it sets the company up to look good. It sets the individuals in the company up to learn something and to have opportunities to grow. I honestly think it's just a win, 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 win. And what was it called? I can never remember this after COVID when like everyone, especially women were like leaving the workforce. Didn't they name the, it something? Yeah. The Great Resignation. Well, that was like everybody was leaving. And then okay. there was this phase called the Great Breakup, where it was more women specific, where women were saying, oh, like, not only is this really an employee's job market right now, but companies aren't supporting me as a woman in this pandemic, yeah. and I'm going to leave, figure it out. Well, this is like almost giving me a little bit of like a PTSD response now that I'm like thinking about those times of like, oh no, not in, I mean, I'm just like, whoa, I I don't know why I kind of like, well, the story of my life is to block out the trauma. So that's why this is happening. But I'm like, I'm just revisiting that. And I'm like, I remember thinking, I mean, I've I've been working from home now for like 10 plus years, but I remember thinking like, this seems impossible. And so in it's mm. interesting because our company grew quite a bit then because more women were leaving and wanting to do things on their own and realizing that between the cost of daycare or childcare, like the net was not good enough to be in an office every day. So I'd rather work 10 to 15 hours from home with my kids here, you know, net a couple thousand dollars extra every month than be out of the house 40 plus hours, more stressed out, netting a couple hundred dollars extra a month but I'm also seeing that there's was also this gap or this entry where this opening for people like you to say like well we can't just shut down the economy and we can't have businesses unable to run so what can we actually do to make women 
and men and whoever like want to stay in their jobs yeah no it was like it was obvious that women leaders in particular needed support in that time right and and leadership coaching was an excellent way for women to feel supported in their day-to-day role but also to start really thinking creatively and thinking proactively about their career future so it was almost like a not like a no cost way not literally but you know essentially a no cost way for the company to say like we want you to be here for the next 10 to 15 years you found that as an entry point and now it seems like just from the trending, what I'm hearing in the coaching industry, what our admissions team is hearing, that's really where a lot of this comes from. The people who are booking calls with our admissions team to try to figure out like what to do with the rest of their lives, commonly asking like, you know, I would like to co- coach inside of an organization or for companies or leadership mm-hmm. stuff. Maybe it's because they left bad environments. I think the reason for it, I mean, this is just my hypothesis, but a lot of People love coaching and not everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. And I think that there's just this growing opportunity for people to say, you know, I get this certification and I can use it in the future on my own as an entrepreneur if that's what I want. But in the meantime, like it adds so much value to them professionally. They have so many new job opportunities that open up when they have this certification because they can manage people better. They can forecast for talent development better they have yeah. opportunities to support their own peers right and so it's like might as well get this and then hey like a million new paths open up to me I think that's cool. right well that's what I think too and then when I noticed this trend happening I also started getting some job or contract positions sent to me too but the requirement was that PCC level credential so mm-hmm. if you're new here Let me just give you a little ICF International Coach Federation mini lesson to get you in the know. Yes, Laura Laura loves a good credential. Do I? I'm just kidding. But there are like similar to, uh, I'm going to use the teaching example. So you go to college, college of your choice, you get your teaching degree, and then you go to the state and you take an exam to become a certified teacher in that state. The ICF is similar. Obviously, it's not state run or even US run. It's international. So it's International Coach Federation. So you go to a school like ours that gives you either the level one, which is the ACC or the level two, which is the PCC credential. And then with that like diploma with with the you know stamp of approval on it, you go to the ICF, you take their test, and then you get this credential. This credential is often the thing that helps people get into these bigger corporate contracts or, you know, be considered legitimate to go inside organizations because the reality is coaching Mm -hmm. is growing. It's, it's most companies, I think large companies that we've seen, Facebook, Spotify, Warby Parker, who else that I'm trying to think Apple, we had one of our Mm -hmm. students who was coaching inside of Apple. They are requiring that credential or at least preferring that credential in order to get in the door because we know that anyone can slap life coach or coach on their Instagram bio Mm -hmm. and sell what they want to sell. But I think organizations and corporations are getting smarter. Thank God. (laughs) Agreed. Yeah. And I mean, when you think back again, I know we talked about executive coaching in the beginning, like a lot of executive coaching was consulting where they were hiring people who had worked in the C-suite of that organization for 15 years and then after retirement would hire them as consultants to like advise these new leaders right so I think this professionalism professionalization of coaching has been so beneficial because we can ensure it's not just about you know giving advice it's not just about having had experience within the current company it's like i can come in without any experience in your company and help your leaders become better leaders because of this skill set hi it's pp right itc graduate and six figure certified coach if you're wondering what it takes to be in the long haul with building your coaching business and diversifying your income streams through PCC credentialing, getting corporate contracts, and working with other universities and companies as a coach, then I want to invite you to our upcoming workshop, Scale Your Skills, on April 23rd at 8 p.m. 
This is a great opportunity to learn something new about our additional programs within ITC and also a really fun way to figure out what it takes to have a long lasting coaching business. I'll be there, of course, and I would love to see you. If you want to register for free, you can use the show notes down below or the description in the YouTube video to register and learn more. See you there. I can see major benefit in that, actually. Like mm-hmm. being coached from someone outside of your industry. I actually think that's a very good point. I'm currently mm-hmm. in a mastermind with no one in a, the coaching industry, and I think it's really cool because it's um and it's peer-led mastermind so there's not like a leader you know we all just like joined it together Mm. and facilitated together but like there's I'm the only one in the coaching industry on there and I think it's really interesting because you can I think we just end up siloed especially if we come from the world of like you know just one-on-one coaching clients who are marketing on social media we forget sometimes the bigger picture but that's Mm -hmm. a tangent we don't need to go on but Regardless, I think that here's the deal when it comes to coaching too, especially if you hold that credential, then you can use all of those like ICF research-based results to market yourself to these organizations too. Like, you know, coaching, I think it's like 90 days of coaching shows these results, like 87% Mm -hmm. increase in confidence, 90% increase in effective communication. Like there's all of these studies done where credentialed coaches have made these major impacts on organizations. And I think that, I mean, it just gets you in the door. Like you said, like you were in these Mm -hmm. places and you were selling the concept of leadership essentially. Mm -hmm. And then I'm sure the conversations in each coaching session was like confidence, communication, mindset, blah, blah, Mm -hmm. blah. But like, this is like also the conversation, I guess now around like coaching to a need versus a niche, like to get yourself Mm -hmm. in the door at these places, you have to be willing to market the problem that they need solved. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's my biggest, that's been my biggest learning curve over eight years is just understanding how to tell the story in a way that speaks to the company and speaks to the individual employee in their situation. And for me, like leadership development is about developing the person who is the leader. So that is life coaching in a way. Um, And, you know, we talk, I'm sure you talk about this all the time on the pod, but like, how do you separate life and work? Like you don't, especially when you're an entrepreneur, right? No, Um, that's like when I used to do career coaching. I mean, I sold career coaching in the sessions it was not typically, maybe the first session when we were still getting to know each other was really about the mm-hmm. career, but then it was like about life. Life gets yeah. in the way of professional advancement typically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So packaging, so leadership is, yeah, what the company wants, but mm-hmm. the individual person wants might be confidence, which comes from, you know, knowing themselves better and understanding their blind spots and developing a personal brand and practicing it and all of that. So partnering with somebody external has been so many of my clients have said like my organization employs one or two coaches on staff, but I want to work with somebody externally because it gives me that outsider perspective of like my situation in my industry. And it also allows me to be I guess just a little more honest without fear of like it leaking to the wrong person. Right. So I think it's interesting. I'm like, there's so much opportunity to be an in-house coach at these companies, which I'm sure they do amazing things. There's so much opportunity to come in as an external coach. And there's so much opportunity to use your coaching cert in the role you're already in as proof of like your own growth. And there's an opportunity to go out there and start your own coaching business. So like, why yeah. wouldn't you, why wouldn't you get the certification? You have a million. Well, I chances. think, I mean, I think the certification, no matter when you get it, it's just there to open doors for you. So like mm-hmm. we've had companies pay for their employees to go through our certification before mm-hmm. uh, so that they can learn the skills. And then the person is also like, yeah. And if I ever want to start a business, like now I have this thing. So again, opening doors. And then, you know, you have people who are like right now, they might not be turned on by, you know, corporate coaching because they're getting out of it or something. But Mm -hmm. down the road, you run into an old colleague who knows what you do. And they're like, 
you know, what if I can pay you $30,000 a month to come coach my executives? You may not want to turn that down. But those are the kind of contracts I'm seeing. Like, Mm -hmm. and those I would say are smaller ones. Mm -hmm. We actually had one of our high level grads also just accept a position designing an entire coaching program for a college. So how amazing. Isn't that cool? And I'm like, these are the things that these credentials open up for you. And I like, thank you for having this conversation with me too, because I think I do know that on these episodes so often we're talking about the basics and like how to get hired, how to make your investment back. You know, Mm -hmm. I don't want to say basics, but like they are, you know, and it's like, we get so sometimes like in this conversation of like how to make the next dollar that we forget that the, the greater the investment, like when you invest in a level two or PCC level training, you open up some massive financial doors for yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. What's your dream company to work for? Like as a contracted coach or something? That's a good question. I think my dream would be, so I love women founded businesses. So my dream would be working as a contracted coach or a leadership development designer or something for um, some of these cool companies like Tia Healthcare, I think is an incredible group. They're like really changing the way women get access to healthcare. Um, Parentally is an incredible women started found up. Um, I don't all even about know helping. what you're saying. I've never heard of these companies. I have to go look what? them up. You're going to have to Google them. Yeah. yeah. Parentally is like a, um, it's actually related to coaching. Parentally is a women founded startup that consults for companies on how to turn, I think their phrase is like turning parental leave into a competitive advantage. So how oh. can you support your parents when they go on paternal leave? And then they actually pair them with a career coach when they come back into wow. their role as part of their benefits package. So they get the opportunity to kind of up level as they come back. So, so many cool people doing cool things. I would love to eventually there partner with. There's so much opportunity in this space. I'm really, I didn't even know, I've never even heard of these two companies. I feel like I'm Ooh. living under a rock. But it's so I love when I have heard of something you haven't because usually it's the other way. You're the no, cooler it's one. No, not, Laura. You are so much cooler than me and you know so much more than me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just tell you, I don't I actually left the house and worked at a coffee shop this morning because I was like in between appointments and wow. I'm like looking around. There's, I was like kind of near the university and I'm like, everyone's so cool. I need to leave my house more. Anyway. Whatever. No. I know a few things, you know, a lot of things, but I'm, I think that it's such an eye opening conversation to have because we're like, it's not about just getting your next client. Like you're not even out there. I mean, I know you take a lot of one-on-one clients and you have this amazing, Laura does this, um, in-person intensive where it's like six months of coaching into like a day or two. Right. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. what do you call them again? Um, it's called powerhouse. So it's a five hour intensive and it's a whole curriculum beginning to end we basically create yeah all of the results you would over six months but in one day so for these women that are already booked to the max on their calendars who have kids who need them who have other priorities like the weekly one-on-one coaching calls were just really hard for a lot of them to fit on their calendar So this is kind of like, I call it like a career retreat day. They can just block off one day on their calendar, sit down and get so much foundational coaching done. Yeah. Well, that's Mm -hmm. crazy. So you do that. And then you also, of course, like through speaking gigs and so forth, pitch Mm -hmm. bigger organizations and companies. So if someone's listening to this, like, I guess I would think, So do I need like a speaker reel first? Do I need a pitch deck? Do I need an email list Mm -hmm. of like women-owned businesses? Like what do you think are the top ways to kind of get your foot in the door? And maybe not Mm -hmm. with like the Facebooks and the Apples of the world, but like the, you know, even I feel like I had uh, an invitation the other day to talk to a local bank. Like they were looking for like a lunch and learn situation. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm even thinking like smaller to mid scale like that, but what would, what do you think? I will say if you are interested in coaching, in coaching for corporations or for organizations, 
networking is huge. So joining like local networking groups, not necessarily entrepreneurial ones, but joining like National Association for Women Professionals, like those kinds of networking groups um, and getting to know people in those companies so that eventually you can have connections if you want to pitch something. Mm -hmm. um, networking is huge. And then I would say start doing I mean, podcasts, you know, I've been on podcasts my whole like coaching journey. I've got a lot of clients that way because it's just a free way to talk to people about what you're doing and they get a sense of who you are, which in the coaching world's everything. People want to know yeah. you if they're going to hire you. So podcasts, networking, and you don't need a fancy pitch deck. You just need an outline of like how this will benefit the company. and why they should bother with the investment basically right yeah. so like if you can research what their company priorities are before you put together a pitch how can you tie your coaching into their company priorities or their company goals make it like an easy yes for them to say absolutely yeah. this is it Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing a little bit of insider info. Obviously, too, we're going to link Laura's information. I know you like mostly literally coach leaders and women on mm -hmm. their way or in the C-suite. Um, but I'm sure, don't you offer these like one-off mentor calls if someone basically wants to be you or be like you? I don't, they don't Laura's usually brain. say I want to you, be you, but yes, I do. Laura's brain for a small fee and we'll put it in the show notes. But I do think it's sometimes it's like people do want to replicate or, or not to, you know, not mm -hmm. copycat, but like they want to learn from someone who's done it before. And I know that you have been always mm -hmm. so gracious with our IGC students and offering this type mm -hmm. of mentorship. And so if you're listening and you're not in the IGC, you know, six figure circle, well, you should get in there or get in our training, but uh, we'll also link Laura's info if you want to, you know, try to get on her busy calendar. Um, yeah. And learn from the best. That would be I'm really awesome. excited for you. And also you're such a stand because you have been in the industry for so long. Like you've been so consistent and I know there's like the whole myth of the like 10 year overnight success and <laughs> <laughs> we're like almost totally. 10 years now yeah but it's just I, I love women who have just stuck with it and like you kept a corporate slash leadership coaching business open in a pandemic mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah you. it was it, it was something but yeah. you know we made it through and um one thing I always come back to is like this is an industry of people who want to help people. Like, what a beautiful thing. Like, I don't want to be in another industry. There yeah. are people in this industry that don't do things the way I would do them. But like, my only job is to show up as like the ethical person I am and like have fun and stick to my guns. And that means continuing to help people even when there's a pandemic and a million other things happening. So I credit yeah. you for that attitude. I feel like you are such a resilient businesswoman, and I feel like I've learned a lot of that from you. So, oh, well, thank you. Mm -hmm. I like to put myself in a position where I literally have no choice but resiliency, and then we just keep going. Just Listen, keep it works. <laughs> Whatever works. Whatever works. Okay, so. We gave you all a lot of information to get started. There's going to be more in the show notes. Also, if the idea of the PCC credential and opening these opportunities for yourself, like I didn't even get into the other opportunities like being a coach trainer or a mentor coach or all of that. Um, but we are doing uh, strategy sessions for scaling your coaching skills and coaching business. So we're going to put a link for that in the bio too. It's innerglowcircle.com slash strategy. They yes. love that. This is for uh, women or, you know, those who identify as women, women who feel safer in women-led spaces. I'm always getting, people always getting on me for uh, not saying all the things, but for mm -hmm. people, humans who want to essentially like scale, scale their skill set yeah. as like a coach or a consultant and, um, you know, try to get people ultimately like in the business that they want and that they love and where they're really excited about it. So book one of those strategy sessions, contact Laura, follow her on Instagram. She's so good at content creation too. That's a whole nother thing. And thanks girl.
<laughs> Thank you. Your eyes I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, when was the last time I posted on Instagram? I need to get myself together. I don't here. know, but you always have like really pretty stories that are well branded. Oh, well, thank you. Mine are I just like, hey, that. everyone, my kids got in trouble again at school today. <laughs> Actually, I live. <laughs> I live for the ones of your children getting in trouble because they're like the most wholesome boys that find ways to get in trouble. And I love that. I know. I'm like, come on, man. It's like <laughs> not that serious. <laughs> All right, girl. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for being here. Okay. Bye.